Okay, uh, this lecture is going to get a little bit into the weeds, so follow along closely. Um, don't be afraid to go back and start over if you need to, but this is some very important stuff for, for getting QGIS and your, your Python QGIS environment set up correctly for plugin development. So we installed uh, QGIS with some other packages in this OSGO 4W64 folder. Um, we have a lot of great things in here. We have different Python installations and we have different Python packages and uh, different uh, helper applications to help us develop plugins. But we need to make our system aware of all these things so that it can use them. And to do that, we're going to create two uh, command line files. And I have them over here on my des desktop. I'm going to actually move these uh, into my OSGO 4W64 folder. And I'll show you what these look like. And I will post these uh, so you can download them and have them easily accessible. First, this pyqgis command. And for now, I'm just going to open this in Notepad++. You can open this in any text or code editor, just so you know. So let's go through this line by line. The echo off just turns off any printing to the command to the terminal window. This first one, OSGO 4W root, sets the path to my OSGO 4W64 install. And so wherever you have this installed, this folder installed, that's what you need to point to here. Okay. This next one points to the O4W environment. Um, and this is found in bin and we'll just search for it. Um, that'll be easier here. But if I click O4WENV.batch. And so that's just going to set up the O4W environment, which I need for a lot of these QGIS, for a lot of the QGIS functionality. Okay. The next thing here points me to QGIS. Um, this points me to the grass libraries. Um, we may not have installed that, um, and if we don't, it's okay. We can remove that. Um, this points me to Qt5, which we use for the UI development for the user interface of our plugins. And this points me to the Python 36 scripts. scripts. And then here we're pointing ourselves to our Python installation, our Python 3 installation. Uh, this final set line here points to Git so that we can use Git and version tracking from, from this command line. Um, and then this will launch the command line or the terminal. So let's go back uh, to where I have that file and I'll show you what happens here. So uh, if I click the pyqgis py command here, we get a command line. And now the great thing about this is we'll have the, the QGIS libraries installed. So if I type Python, uh, Python 3 here, you can see I have this Python 3 installation, which is great. And then I can go import QGIS.core. And I don't get any error messages, and that shows that I've imported uh, the important QGIS functions I need. Um, I could also import PyQ from here. I won't do that now. I'm going to type quit to exit out of this interactive Python session. And we need to do a couple of things here. The first thing we need to do is make sure we update pip. And pip is a Python install package. And the way we'll do this is we'll go Python 3-m pip install dash dash upgrade pip. Okay, and so this, this tells us to use Python and pip to install and upgrade itself, okay? So let's hit enter here, and you can see we're working. And this might take just a minute. We've collected the pip. Um, it's finding this new version here. So our existing installation was 9.0.1, and we can see there's a new version, 9.0.3, which is why we need to update. Okay, now we've successfully installed pip. The next thing we need to do 
is install PB Tool. And PB Tool is plugin builder tool. Um, and so this will help us build a QGIS plugin. So let's go ahead um, and do Python 3 m pip install dash de, uh, pip install pb underscore tool. Okay, and we can hit enter there. And we can see we're collecting pb tool. And it's installing the dependencies now as well. So let's give this just a minute to install. PB Tool has some great functionality that will make it really easy to compile our plugin um, and make it easy to develop your plugin in one place and then deploy it very easily uh, for testing to your QGIS plugins repository locally. It should be just about there. You can see now that it's installing the packages that it just collected. Okay, we're good to go. And we can just check this. So if we type pb underscore tool, you can see here we get a lot of information about it, which is what you want. So we typed it here. It tells us what it is, a simple Python tool to compile and deploy a QGIS plugin. Um, and then it gives us uh, all these different commands. We're not going to go through those now. We'll come back to those later um, as we start to build our plugin. Okay, so hopefully you've got through this okay. If you've had troubles with this, I will post a website that, that walks through these steps. Um, if you're still having troubles, feel free to contact me and I can help you with this. Okay, so that covers one of these files, the pyqgis.cmd. The other one is the pycharm.cmd. And let's open this one again with Notepad++. And this is the exact same file. I've simply added one line. And what this will do is it will open PyCharm so that PyCharm is aware of all these QGIS libraries and we can use autocomplete and use the, uh, the QGIS Python installation to develop in PyCharm, which make th makes things go really smoothly. If we don't do this, it's okay. We can still write the Python scripts by hand or from memory with the code and it will still work great, but this just makes development a whole lot easier. Um, so you'll notice if I go back to the first file, um, these two files are exactly the same. I've added one line here. This is just saying that PyCharm is aware of QGIS. And then this is the part you need to worry about. This is the path to your PyCharm installation. If you install the 32-bit version, this will be program files and you'll have like an x86 there for the 32-bit files. The path should be similar other than that. Make sure you use the correct exe. If you install the 64-bit version, you will need to make sure that your executable has the 64 on the end of it, okay? Once you add this line, um, when I run uh, this, when I double click this and run it, what it will do is it will open PyCharm. And it will open PyCharm with knowledge of these libraries here that I've just, that I've just set. Okay, so, so let's just go ahead and make sure this file works. So I'm gonna double click pycharm.cmd. Whoops. Oh, sorry, I removed the, um, it doesn't matter, see. Um, so we've got pycharm up and running now. What I did is I, I removed the cmd.exe here. You don't actually need it. I was expecting that to stay up and it didn't. Um, but this open PyCharm. If it doesn't open the first time, click it again. Some or check to make sure PyCharm is not behind another screen. It takes PyCharm a few minutes to load. But you can see that I've opened PyCharm here. 
okay? So that's all we're going to cover for now in this video. Um, there is one more step we need to do in PyCharm, but we're, we're not going to do that until we have the plugin, uh, the base of the plugin built. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to leave off there for now, um, and we're getting closer to actually working on this plugin. If you've had trouble with any of this, uh, please let me know. Check out the resources that I'm posting. Uh, they should be able to help you. Um, and if you still have trouble, then, then please contact me.